What's up guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with SPY, test on the overall market, and also talk about the jobs numbers that came out and how the market's responding thus far. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link. You deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. You deposit 1000 bucks, you're guaranteed 15 in total, not to mention an 8.1% APY on uninvested cash. Offerings in a few weeks. Anyways, the market is pushing right now because of what we saw from the jobs report. We're getting a very, very positive reaction to it. Let me just break down the numbers real quick before I talk about these charts. So the jobs numbers were not too good. Joel's job openings were only at about 7.67 million. That's below the 8.1 million expectation. And then for quits, we saw job quits at 3.27 million below, not below, above expectations. So that's showing that there's a lot of quits in the economy for the month of July, and the job openings are once again below expectations. So low job openings and high job quits, once again, not the best of news, at least in terms of the labor markets. This person known as Heather Long has summarized everything very nicely. We have the lowest job openings since January 2021. So let that sink in. Hiring did pick up about 3.5% in July, according to the data, which is the only thing that's encouraging about this. But if anything, the job market is looking weaker and we're continuing to see more and more contraction. Now, there's a bullish way of looking at this and a bearish way for the markets. So what is the thing that pushes the market up about this? You could argue that, hey, the labor market is contracting, so the Fed has to be a lot more careful. And that's what Jerome Powell said. He said that if we start getting bad job, jobs numbers, uh, you know, the Fed may be more incentivized to cut. So that could be part of why the market is pumping. But at the same time, you know, the numbers are pretty bad and this could lead to recessionary fears. So that would be like the more bearish case. If the market were to dump it because of this, that's how the market would interpret this. So my point in saying that is that when you look at this data, there could be a bullish case and a bearish case, a, a interpretation of this that's bullish or bearish. Uh, and the market's choosing the bullish interpretation. That's why we're pushing. So I just want to make it very clear that data doesn't have to, you know, always be perfect and the market doesn't always have to be logical. They could find a way to do what they want to do and they're using this data to pump things. So we just have to push and pretty much just go based off that. So because the market's pushing right now, we're going to be looking at this 555 areas of resistance close to our 50 EMA, not to mention 557. So there's going to be your two resistance levels. Our supports to watch for is going to be around 553. If that fails us, we could get very close to about 552 and then 550 all over again. But so far, we're looking more bullish. We look, we could be pushing for 555. And spies looking at the more uh, bullish interpretation of the data. Uh, the market could be excited because of the Fed cut that's coming. And they're using that as a reason to pump things higher. So that's why we're pushing for now. For NVIDIA... We're looking at this 110 area as our resistance. If we break this, we're going to be looking for a push all the way up towards this, the 113s essentially. And then above that, we have, um, we're going to be approaching 115. Now, our support to watch for is going to be around 108. Uh, then we have 104 below that. I think we could push a little bit higher. Then we'll see if we get a rejection or not, but look for a little bit more upside potential for the time being. For ES, we're trying to push a little bit higher right here. We're looking at 5550s, our support, our 200 EMA. And our resistance to watch for is going to be very close towards about 5580. Uh, That's going to be the main uh, resistance to watch for. I think we could push a little bit higher on ES. But don't forget, guys, even with the market pushing, we could still get a rejection off resistance once we get up there. So I think ES could be pushing close to about 5560. Uh, and then once we break that, we'll, we'll basically be looking for 55.65 and 55.80 as our resistance levels. And off, I would say around 55.65, I'd be careful. We could get a rejection closer to that. On SPY, you know, like I said before, 55, uh, 555 and basically 557 could come, but then we'll see if we get a rejection or not off those levels. For now, we are bullish. We may be approaching those res resistance levels, so we'll see how we react to that. Same thing with NVIDIA. Uh, there's 112 and then 115. I just want to clarify we could reject, but for now we're looking more bullish uh, as we approach resistance. For Bitcoin, look at 58,000. If we break there, we're looking for 58,900. Those are going to be our two resistance levels. We'll see where we end up projecting, so watch that very carefully. But for now, we do look a little bit more bullish. For Tesla, we're looking more bullish as well. Uh, we have a nice inverse head and shoulders like structure, and we're going to be looking at this 222 areas of resistance. If that breaks, we're looking for basically 225. 
Now, the support to watch for is going to be around this 220 set, uh, 217 area, excuse me, for now. But we do look more bullish, and I think that we could be pushing for that 222 target, and we'll see if Tesla rejects off that or not. So as of right now, we are favoring upside. But just be careful, because once we get to that resistance, we'll see if we get a rejection. So far, we're doing a good job at holding up, and we are favoring the bullish outcome. For NQ, we look bullish. Uh, we could be approaching previous support becoming resistance at 19,200. So it could push a little bit more, but watch resistance to see if we get a rejection. And if we lose 19,000, we're looking for support around 18,900. For now, I do favor the upside for the time being. For the QQQ, we're looking for 465 as resistance, not to mention 468. And we have support around this 460 area. I think I'm favoring a little bit more upside for that 465 zone. We are favoring a little bit of a push, and we'll see what kind of reaction we get from here. But for now, the QQQ is looking bullish. I think we might be pushing higher, and then we'll see what kind of reaction we get off 465. For um, Apple, we have 218 as our support. If we hold this, we could be looking for 220 plus, and eventually 222. If we lose 218, we're going to be looking for a dump. But as of right now, we're looking decent. We're just barely holding support, so we'll see how it does. This is still kind of weak compared to the market. Uh, so we'll see if 218 holds. For the IWM, we have 212 as critical support. We actually bounce off of that. So we're looking at this 216 area as our resistance. If we lose 212, we, we would be dipping all the way down to 208. But this is looking more bullish and might be pushing for 216. And we'll see if we reject or not. For a few more, like Coinbase, Coinbase is looking decent. We did dip quite a bit down to about the low 160s only to rebound. So we're going to be looking for basically 168 as resistance followed by 172. And then our support is going to be around 165. So I think Coin could try to rebound closer to 170 to 172, and we'll see if we reject off that or not. Amazon remains, remains uh, range bound. We're trying to hold 175 as support. If this holds, we could try to push closer to 178, but we're still in this range. If we lose the 175s, we remain more bearish. If we break past 178, we turn more bullish. We're still barely holding 175, so I would say that it is possible we rebound a little bit, but we're barely holding support, so we'll see if that holds. It's not looking that strong to me. Meta is showing more strength. If we were to lose 506, I would turn more bearish. As long as we hold above this, we're looking at resistance very close to this 515 area. If that breaks, we're looking for 518. So far, it's doing a good job. For Microsoft, we're looking at resistance at 412, and we have our main support at 410. Uh, I'm sorry, we have resistance at 410 and 412, and then our support's going to be at about 406. So I think that it depends on 410. If we could hold this, we're looking for 412. If not, I mean... It depends if we could hold it above 410 or not. If we do hold it, we could push higher. If not, we could turn. So we'll see. Google has resistance around this 160 area, so we'll see what kind of reaction we get. But just note the market still has potential nonetheless. So if we break 160 on Google, we're looking for 162. If not, we're going to be dipping. So I think that we're doing a good job at rebounding. The market may attempt to hold up, if not push. But just note that resistance is going to be very tough, and we'll see what kind of reaction we get from there. So for now, the market is trying to push, but just note that resistance is going to be very tough, and it's still possible for us to reject later on. Later on, not right now, but later on, uh, the market's still holding up nicely, so give it some time, and we'll see how things progress from here. That being said, I thank you for listening. Have a great day. I'll see you guys in a couple of hours and peace out.